So, you got zapped by an ancient evil living dormant under Hyrule Castle, and after a magic arm transplant, you've awoken in a strange new place in the sky. Welcome to The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. The Great Sky Island is your tutorial island, and it's a bit longer and a little more obtuse than the Great Plateau. So, in an effort to get you off of this rock and exploring Hyrule as quickly as possible, you can use this video as a guide so that way you can locate every single shrine, you'll know the solution to every puzzle, and where you need to go. Before we begin though, if you could do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. I plan on making a bunch of videos answering all of your Tears of the Kingdom related questions, so if that's something that you're interested in, subscribe so you don't miss a thing. Thanks! First things first, as soon as you land on the island, look around a bit, familiarize yourself with the controls, gather some food and weapons because you're gonna need it. Once you think you're good to go, make your way over to this robot guy waiting for you. This is a construct. Not all of them are friendly, but talking to this construct will give you the Purapad, which is this game's equivalent to the Sheikah Slate, so it's essential. Once you've got the Purapad, activate the bridge nearby by examining the Zonai Rune, and then head on to the next set of islands. You can continue to gather supplies here or talk to the other friendly construct, but ultimately, you'll need to dive down to the next set of islands to continue. Here you'll find your first set of enemy constructs. They aren't difficult, but use this time to get used to the combat. Once you feel comfortable, head towards the Temple of Time. Follow the marker on your map. Once you approach the entrance, fight this construct standing in your way and steal his shield. It'll be helpful on your adventure. Afterwards, go up to the Zonai Rune and activate it. Here, you'll meet Raru. He's the guy who gave you the arm. Anyway, he says you're a little weak manlet, which is mostly true, so now we need to go and power up at the shrines nearby. The first one is easy enough to see. Just walk towards it from the Temple of Time. Head towards the shrine, you'll find a stairway leading up to the entrance like so. Once inside, you'll get the Ultra Hand ability. This allows you to manipulate certain objects in the world and attach them together to build vehicles, solve puzzles, and, well, a lot of things in the game require it, so it's best to get yourself used to it now. This first shrine is fairly straightforward. Use Ultra Hand to pick up the stone slab in front of you and make a bridge to cross the first gap. Then on the other side, combine the next two stone slabs together to make a longer bridge and, again, cross the gap. Much like in Breath of the Wild, you can find chests inside of shrines. Usually they aren't worth the extra effort to get, but this first chest can be attained by taking your longer bridge and turning it into a hill to access the taller platform. Now around the corner is the final puzzle of this shrine. Grab the wooden platform from the wall and attach the hook to the center of it, place it on the rail, and ride it over to the statue, that way you can exit the shrine. Once outside, Raru will talk to you again, and now you'll see two more shrines to your right and to your left. I like to mark them on my map with the Purapad just to help keep my bearings straight. Jump off this area where the shrine is to the left and land in a body of water. Next, you'll need to climb to where that rail is and just like in the shrine, make a hooked platform and ride it over to the next set of islands. Here you can chat with Raru again and get a bit more lore for the constructs. Afterwards, keep walking towards the next shrine. Eventually, you'll come across Raru again and you can chat with him if you'd like. If not, you can continue moving north and you'll find a body of water that's guarded by some constructs. It's best to take them out, that way you can safely move forward. Now to the right of this lake, you'll find a Korok who needs your help. You can choose to help him if you wish, but more importantly, there is another rail. You can build a hooked platform using the logs nearby and place it on the- You can build a hooked platform using the logs nearby. If you want to, place the Korok on it and ride it down to the next platform. We have to go here anyway, so you might as well bring the Korok along for the ride. After reuniting both Koroks, you can reuse your platform to move down to the next set of islands where the shrine is. Now you'll want to move towards the center of the lake. Be careful of the choo-choos who are waiting in the grass for you. You'll come across some logs and a sail on the ground. You can use Ultra Hand to craft a raft and ride it over to the other side of the lake where the shrine is. Now all you have to do is climb up to the entrance and head inside. This shrine is where you'll get the Fuse ability. This lets you attach objects to your weapon and shield to make them stronger or augment them. For this first puzzle, simply fuse one of the rocks to a dual-handed weapon to break down the door. Once you go through to the main hall, to your right is a room with a bunch of fire fruit. Collect those and fuse one of them to an arrow to burn down the leaves in the wall so you can get yourself a chest. This one contains a small key, so it's required to complete the shrine. The optional chest for this shrine can be found on top of one of these stone pillars. It's cracked, so you can simply just hit it with your weapon to collect it. After that, you can continue moving forward through the chamber and use your small key to open up the door. Before you leave, you have to fight a construct, but you can use any of your preferred combat methods to take him out. Fire arrows tend to work pretty good though. Once defeated, break down the stone wall blocking your path and you're good to go with this shrine. 
Once you're back on the Sky Island, a construct is going to give you an energy cell. This lets you use powered Zonai devices like fans, rockets, platforms, etc. They're very, very useful, so you'll want to upgrade these later on. Follow the path like the construct said, fighting enemies along the way, and eventually heading into the Pond Side Cave. Here you're going to find some new enemies, but more importantly, you can find a chest containing the ancient tunic. If you keep navigating through this small cave, on the other side of it, you'll find a lake with some constructs trying to get across it. To the right of those constructs are some spare parts that you can use to build a powered raft and cross over to the other side. From there, follow the natural path upwards until you find a minecart rail leading into a cave. Now is an opportunity to build a powered minecart to ride these rails into the cave. You won't get too far, but at the end of the line you can talk to a construct and learn a little bit more about Bright Bloom Seeds. And trust me, you want to know that information. After speaking with the construct, you can use those Bright Bloom Seeds to illuminate the cave and follow it downwards. You'll find some more constructs down here, but you specifically want to talk to the one near the forge to learn about Zonite and Zonite Charges. Again, this is really important for later on, so keep it in the back of your mind. After you're done talking to that construct, head over to the rail leading outwards and talk to the construct over there and he'll give you some capsules. Take them and build another powered minecart and ride the rail to the next set of islands. Talk to Raru once you arrive and then visit the construct near the Zonai Gachapon dispenser to get some Zonai capsules. Grab your powered minecart and bring it to the other side of the island to ride the next set of rails over. Don't forget to grab this Korok along the way. Once on the next island, the Koroks are united again. What you want to do is take your powered minecart and attach a hook to it. That way you can ride the underside of the rail upwards to the next set of islands. There's a chest in the nearby ruins that contains a portable pot. You'll want to pick that up and head to the cliffside behind you. Look for the water and jump on in. Now nearby is a snowy area, so you may want to cook some spicy food. You can use your portable pot, but also nearby is a cave with a cooking pot inside for you to use as well. You can combine meat with those spicy peppers or any spicy slash fire food together to make something that will give you cold resistance. And trust me, you'll need it coming up. After you're done cooking, head up through this cave, eat your spicy food, and you'll see the last shrine right in front of you as you exit. Keep moving forward until you get to the next cave system. Pick up the bomb flowers as you come across them and be careful not to blow yourself up. Trust me, we've all done it at least once. Heading up through this cave, you'll find some like likes. You can place a bomb flower near them, and they'll eat it allowing you to hit their weak spots. They also drop a chest once you kill them, so not the worst idea to fight them anytime you see them. Now continue heading upwards, and right before the exit is another like like. Killing this one is optional, but hey, if you choose to do so, you'll get two chests for your effort. Now, the final shrine is really close by, but the problem is you can't exactly climb ice, so... The solution I found, and I'm pretty sure this is not the intended way, but it worked, so I'm going to share it anyways. Here's what I did. I took two logs that I found lying around, stitched them together with Ultra Hand, and then leaned them up against the ice wall. Eventually, I got them to stick to the wall and I was able to climb up. Once up, I just walked over to the shrine and went right on inside. This shrine is where you get the Ascend ability. This one allows you to travel through platforms and objects that are directly above you. It's pretty sick and used in a lot of ways in this game, but it does require some getting used to. As you might imagine though, this shrine is all about using Ascend, so it's fairly easy. Just walk forward up to the low hanging roofs in this shrine, and then use the Ascend ability to travel upwards. Once you get into the area with the Construct, defeat him, and then cut the ropes that are holding up the stone bridge. Behind you are some boxes that you can move out of the way, and then go into the alcove to use Ascend again to reach a chest. Now just use Ascend underneath the bridge, and underneath the moving platforms to reach the shrine's exit. It's as easy as that. Exit the shrine and now Raru is going to appear before you again. After speaking with him, use Ascend on the weird tree looking platforms nearby. Inside this tree you'll actually find some cold resistant pants inside of a chest. And if you keep going forward, you'll eventually find some bird gliders. Hop on and ride it all the way back to the Temple of Time where we started this whole thing. Once there, just climb back up to the top and once again, activate that terminal. Now you can head inside and check out the giant kidney bean looking stone to initiate a cutscene with Zelda and receive your fourth ability, Rewind. As the name suggests, Rewind lets you reverse the flow of time of an object. Use this on the water wheels to head up to the goddess statue. Behind the statue is a door that you should probably try and open up, but doing so, you'll find out that you're still a little weak manlet, so Robert will mark the location of a final shrine on your Pura Pad. Thankfully, it is near one of the other shrines, so we can travel back there using the Pura Pad's teleportation ability. Now that we have Rewind, we can actually access an entirely new area to the left of where we teleported into. 
So use Ascend to travel up to the higher platform, then you can use Rewind to reverse the direction of the water wheel. Jump across those and into the cave and follow that all the way to the last shrine. There's a construct nearby who produces more energy cells for your battery in exchange for crystallized zonite charges, so keep that location in mind for later on. That being said, enter the last shrine. This one's pretty straightforward as well. Use Rewind on the raft to ride it to the next platform. Once there again, the same thing on the raft to ride it back up the waterfall. Once up top, you can use Rewind on the giant gear to your left to get a chest with some arrows. Then you can use Rewind on the giant clock hands to sync them up in order to open the door. And that's basically all there is to it for this shrine. Once you exit, head outside from the cave and grab one of those bird gliders and ride it all the way back to the Temple of Time again. You can actually steer the bird by walking around on it, just try and land close. If you do mess up, don't worry though, you can always use Ascend to get back up topside. Once you're back inside the Temple of Time again, use Rewind to get up to the Goddess Statue. Now that we've completed all four shrines, we can pray to the statue and get ourselves a heart container. With four hearts, we can finally open up that door, and once you do, you'll have a brief conversation with Raru. After that, all you've got to do is make your way to the altar in front of you by using Ascend and all of your other abilities, and there you'll get a cutscene where Link holds up the Master Sword and some wild crazy time stuff happens, but we're not going to talk about that right now. After you're done, we'll take a leap of faith and jump straight down into the Kingdom of Hyrule. Congratulations, you've made it off to Toriel Island. Now your adventure really begins. But that's also where this video ends, so once again guys, my name is Matt, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.